guys, welcome to the Raising Kellen podcast. My name is Marsh Schneider and I blog at RaisingKellen.org where we curate resources for parents raising children with developmental delay and or disabilities. In today's episode 73, I'm chatting with Waverly and Harris, CEO of Friends Life Community, an organization based here in Nashville, Tennessee. As always, remember the information provided on this podcast is purely educational. And if you are seeking advice for your specific situation, to always contact a trained professional. Hi guys, my name is McKendra Ezel and I'm a senior at Dysburg High School and I am interning on this podcast. I saw Friends Life Community a few months ago performing and I just thought that they did an amazing job. So I thought it would be a great idea to interview them and see what their organization is about. Thanks, Megidra, for letting us know about Friends Life Community. And guys, get ready for some awesome conversation. Put those feet up, grab your cup of coffee, and let's get going. Welcome to the Raising Kellen podcast, Waverly. We are so glad to have you here with us today. Thank you. I'm so, so happy to be here. Thank you for asking me to be on. Waverly, I would like to introduce you to Mackendra Easel. She's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. Uh, Kendra, you came to the Kindling Show, is that right? Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Okay, so my first question would be, could you give us like an overview of like Friends Life Community and what role you play there? And sorry, what was the second part? What, what role, role do you, you play, play there? Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, so Friends Life Community started as, you know, just wanting to make sure that um, adults who are aging out of high school have a place to go after high school, but also to be a part of the community to make friends and to continue their learning. And so we have been operating as a program for about 14 years now. Next year will be our 15th year. And since 2011, we've been in this um, wonderful old home as like our home base. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we have multiple classes throughout the day in which the friends get to choose what classes they do within three areas. So we have life skills, service learning and employment, and then visual and performing arts, which um, is a part of the uh, arts program that you saw. And so through those programs, they grow personally, which is a lot of confidence building, self-advocacy, self-expression, but then they also uh, grow socially in building friendships and also socially within the community. So one thing we really believe in um, is making sure that we're not just we're not just expecting individuals with disabilities to change in order to fit into society, but we're also educating the community as a whole um, so that they have more opportunities and that the community is understanding the value that they bring to community. And so everything we do has a very community facing agenda and it's all about breaking down barriers, changing perceptions, and creating these bridges so that everybody can work together and be better together. Oh, and um, you'd ask my role. I'm current. I'm the CEO of Friends Life Community, and I started in 2011 when they started the day program. I was hired as the first program director, and I uh, got to work with a really special team to kind of start it up grassroots and have been fortunate enough to be able to see it grow for the last 11 plus years and um, get to be a part of where we are today. You talked about like community events, like how many community events do y'all host a year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we only host maybe three or four per year. Sometimes we have them on site, um, but like the Kindling Arts Festival that you attended, uh, we were actually, we were one of 60 different uh, arts groups that applied to be a part of that festival. 
So Kindling Arts Festival hosted it and we were chosen, we were one out of 16 different groups that were chosen to perform. And so we have a couple of groups, like we have an event coming up um, November 10th. It's a Thursday night at uh, Tennessee Performing Arts Center. And so TPAC will be hosting this event. And this is where um, it will be similar. It's a performing arts presentation, but 10 friends have written their own stories that they will then be uh, performing on TPAC stage. And so we have, and then we're, uh, so through the arts, we probably have maybe 10 events per year. Um, but then also we have traveling acting and dancing groups and they each have a season and they perform maybe 30 times within a season out in the community. So different schools, nonprofits, businesses will host us and we'll book the friends to come and perform for them. And that's another way that, you know, um, again, going back to kind of building those relationships and breaking down barriers, you know, we can't expect everybody to come to Friends Life, but if they, uh, when they partner with us and have us come to their groups and maybe we're there for their lunch hour or whatever, it's a great way to kind of build relationships and start to break down some of those walls. So we do that. Uh, we probably have maybe 60 shows a year that we do. Ooh, that's a lot of shows. Um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when I was there, and I was there to watch my niece, Kiana. Oh, and, like, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't know she was your niece. That's amazing. Yes, no. And so, like, each piece was, like, beautifully pieced together. And, like, some of them were, like, even emotional. So, like, my question is, how long does it take to, like, put each show together? A uh, long time. <laughs> um, well, I'm so glad. So Kiana's piece, just for those who um, are kind of hearing this for the first time, if you go to our YouTube page, so Friends Life Communities YouTube page, uh, Kiana's piece, uh, her film pops up. It's the first video that pops up. And a couple of years ago, she wrote this piece. So Kiana, like many of us is always looking for a relationship and always looking for a boyfriend. And um, she kind of wrote into her piece, her ideal date and, you know, being with her prince. And then in the middle of it, uh, she is kind of taken, she's separated from him and then surrounded by these amazingly strong women who then help transform her into like, her best self and recognizing within herself the power that she has. And she comes out and leads kind of this um, choreographed dance with these like women of power kind of supporting her. And then at the end of it, she, um, one of the women holds up a mirror for her and she then says into the mirror, I love you. And so it's this classic story of how, you know, oftentimes we're always looking externally for love. And then we're on this amazing journey where we find it within ourselves. And so this story is something that is representative of Kiana, but also such a great example of how, you know, she may tell it in a way that's unique to her, but we can all relate to it. And that's what makes that emotional connection. Cause you're right. Some of these stories are very emotional and that's what we, that's what we love. We want people to laugh together, to cry together. Um, but to your point and how long it takes to develop that, uh, we have some incredibly specialized staff who help the friends. Because some of our friends, Kiana is very verbally expressive, but we have quite a few friends who are less verbally expressive. And so it takes time to gather lots of information in different ways in order for them to best tell their story. And so it usually takes maybe about a year and that's meeting once a week or so um, to help the friend be able to tell their story because we want it to be them. We don't want to be telling it for them. Um, so gathering the information, putting the story together, and then comes practicing and acting and being able to then perform it or to be able to film it. I never like realized that like it was their own story. I thought that like 
somebody had written it out for them or like Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is everything we do within the performing arts is original work um you know some of our staff may help to um help them kind of create the storyline so that what they're trying to say um you know makes sense to a larger audience but everything is completely their story. So at so the TPAC show in November is a whole new set of 10 new friends with their stories. But then Kiana will be performing um, what you saw at Kindling. She'll be doing that live again. Um, but it's all like uh, Jimmy Miller, for example, he um, loves puppets. It's just something he really loves. So we partner with the Nashville Puppet Theater. And they helped him create a puppet that looks like him. And then he's written this superhero story of what, you know, his ideal kind of what his day, his perfect day would look like as him being a superhero. And so he'll be performing it on stage with some other team members of the Nashville uh, Puppet Theater. But it's his story. And they just helped him bring it to life. Waverly, can you tell me how businesses or nonprofits interested in hosting Friends Life community um, at their place of business or uh, at a community event can contact you? Or, or what does that look like? Yeah, well, if it's in Nashville, it's really easy. Um, we have different seasons where we run different shows and definitely just you can call the office here um, or um, we have a listing of our staff on our website. And Sarah Edwards is the director of our um, performing arts program. But really, you can always just email admin at friendslife.org and we will get you know anyone to the right person. You know, when it comes to something that's a little bit outside of Nashville, then we love to work with people to coordinate, you know, um, being able to spend a good amount of time there around other events um, and also bring around awareness. We worked for, um, I guess it, it was about three years. We did a project in Carroll County, West Tennessee. And because there were quite a few families out there who, just really had a hard time finding programming. And so we were able to partner with them to bring some programming there. But what it did was it also, it gave them something to bring families together so that then they could communicate and coordinate around. So so in 2020, we started the Friends Treat Truck and it is essentially an ice cream truck that businesses, nonprofits, churches, apartment complexes hire us to then come out and provide ice cream treats to their customers, employees, um, pretty much anyone and everyone. And so that also creates um, opportunities for the friends to learn job skills. But we've also hired five friends to work evenings and weekends this year. And, um, and that has been a great way for us to also, so like if there is a, a business or a church group or a school that's outside of Nashville who wanted maybe like a performance by the friends, but also wanted the treat truck to come out. We could create like a longer event, but also build community and create awareness around, you know, all the individuals in their own community that are there and are also looking for programs to be a part of and opportunities outside of school. Well, this is an amazing organization. And for any folks out there that want to know more about Friends Life Community, what would be the best way to contact uh, you all, Waverly Ann? Yeah, so our website has a lot of information on it. It's friendslife.org. Also, following us on social media is a great way. We're on Instagram, Facebook, um, just to stay in touch with events that are coming up or just activities, get to know who we are. And then anyone can always just call us. All of our information is on the website um, or email us. Like we love talking to people and um, we love giving tours. And, you know, it really is all about community and just building that community. So we love it when people reach out. So like volunteers, like how do you do that? Like if anybody wanted to come and just like volunteer for a day, 
and just like spend time with them? Are they able to do that? Yeah. So we have, uh, we love volunteers. I will say that again, a lot of it's about building relationships as uh, usually if we have like a one day event, it's kind of more work related. So it's doing things around campus. Um, As you probably know, um, our friends are very social and they depend on relationships. So if someone wants to work with the friends, like say assist in classes or um, volunteer for the treat truck, um, we do require a minimum of three months of um, of commitment because, you know, the friends build these great relationships. And like a lot of times people come in and they're in and out of their life a lot. And so um, so we really kind of we focus on those long term volunteer opportunities. But we have uh Our volunteer uh, manager is actually on maternity leave right now, which is exciting. Um, But it uh, it has uh, we're putting off kind of um, new volunteers until January. But then we'll be back up and running with lots of volunteer opportunities for the next year. So thank you for the interview. Like when I first went and saw your show, I was like, they really like do some amazing work. And it would be like great to like talk to them and stuff. Oh, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, please put November 10th on your calendar. If you enjoyed that, it's just a lot of the same kind of concepts. And again, all original work by the friends. Um, Kiana, you can, uh, yeah, show off your niece because she does an amazing job and she's just, you know, she just, she rocks it. She's so cool. Um, so yeah, like please bring your friends, tell people about it and stay in touch. Cause we, um, yeah, there's still so many opportunities out there and we really want to kind of just be a part of growing opportunities for all individuals, um, who have disabilities and have so much to give and really deserve, um, to have a place in each community. So whatever we can do to build up that network and partner with others, wherever you may be, um, we love that kind of work. So thank you. Thanks for inviting me here today. Absolutely. Waverly, And we look forward to working with you guys in the future. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Guys, thank you as always for listening along with us today. Uh, We would sincerely appreciate a like and a share of this podcast to spread the message of the great work being done at Friends Life Community. Uh, Mackendra, is there anything that you would like to add? If you have any information for us or if you would just like to ask a question, you can easily just reach reach out to us at RaisingKeelan at gmail.com. And you can also visit us on all our social media po- platforms. Thanks so much for that, McKendra. And guys, as um, that email again is RaisingKeelan at gmail.com. And our website is www.raisingkellen that's k-e-l-l-a-n dot org until next time have a great week and we'll see you all soon as always remember get to the top of your mountain this is Marsh Naidu together with McKendra Ezel signing off <laughs>